Welcome back to Nightmind, friends. And hey, before you sit down, I know you're eager to get right into the update, and we are about to, but let me give you a quick explanation, alright? The absolute best way for me to have conducted this update investigation was just like I did for the very first time when we discovered Welcome Home. So that's precisely how I did it. And it was on Twitch, but I kept it as much in the style of the first video as possible. No PNG tuber, no visible chat, no sound redeems or visual redeems. We all got to have a shared experience, including when cast and crew members of Welcome Home joined us for the celebration, which was very cool and a lot of fun. But the visuals and sound are exactly what feels right. It's just you, me, and the neighborhood of Welcome Home. At times, you may hear me talking to the viewers or reacting live to the content, but that's it. Everything that was provided as an update seems to be covered, as Clown told us at the end that Wally would assign our efforts an A+, which was very reassuring. It's all here, as condensed as I could make it. The new content, my reactions, my thoughts, and any theorizing I can offer at this time that makes sense. And hey, thanks again for supporting Nightmind and Unfiction creators, like Clown and the team behind Welcome Home. You're the reason that brilliant artists get to make it in this world and be free to do what they do best. So, without further ado, let's go visit our neighbors. Here we are again, everybody. Welcome home, and as you can see, if you remember from last time, the splash screen, the intro screen, has changed significantly. It is much more detailed now. Now we have a different view of home, and all the areas surrounding it. It's very pretty, isn't it? Alright. Same landing. Wally on the rock. Oh! Oh, wow. Okay. So, now we have media, stickers, merchandise. Good for you. Good for you. Damn right. Damn right. Good. Good. Deserved. The Playfellow exhibition. That's new. And all the website updates. And, as usual, there are letters popping out of place. So we're going to need those. Okay, so website updates. Serendipitous salutation, dear neighbor. So much has happened since we've last spoken to you. How could so much support and attention be summed up in so few words? We came to you asking for help like a neighbor in need of a cup of sugar, but you've given us your whole pantry supply. That's saying a lot with nearly 5 million friendly visitors. Our gratitude is immeasurable, and with your help, we are confident we will uncover Welcome Home's whereabouts. Now remember, remember everybody, while this is absolutely wonderful for the creative team of the project and the celebration of wonderfully made on fiction and art in general, uh, in-universe, this is absolutely fucking terrible. This is probably a disaster in the making. <laughs> so, don't forget, as thanks to you, Lookers of the Lost, we have uncovered an exciting array of findings that are sure to solidify our speculations. We always knew it was real, ever since that first itch in the back of our mind. You need to know too now, don't you? Do you feel it? It's good that you came back. We hope perusing our most recent findings will be a doggone good time, as Barnaby would say. Remember, neighbor, home is where the heart is, and this house is brimming with love for you. Welcome to the search party, the Welcome Home Restoration Project. <laughs> oh, that is delicious. That's horrible, but that's delicious. I love it. Oh. Hey, yeah, this is something. Did this... Fade in while we were scrolled down? Uh-oh. Oh, tell me this is not buffering, whatever this is. Whew. There you are. Welcome home. Ha ha ha. <laughs> well, there's Wally. I like I like the connotation here that uh that this is just 
a record recording and nothing's haunted yet but that is that is cute if i highlight the page you get a transcript on each and every one of these pages all right i'll remember that but first let me keep on looking oh bug oh wow what is Oh. Well, there we go. Okay. Blue don't actually have any blue pigmentation. They have to grow in soil that is basic as well, so the pine straw should be left for the other beds. You're telling me that these flowers are liars, Frankie? <sighs> I'm not telling you that these flowers are liars, Barnaby. I'm talking about how these flowers are specially selected to look this way. Hey, being blue isn't anything special, pal. Don't you know that blue is all the rage nowadays? I don't think people are painting themselves blue, frankly. Are you saying your fur color isn't natural? I beg your pardon? I am a natural beauty as far as you know. <laughs> I doubt you're any sort of beagle. I've never seen any blue dog before in my life. Now if you don't mind, we'd like to continue tending to my flowers in peace. You're gonna have to do more than tend to him if you want him to grow up nice and big. You know what they say, you gotta entertain your plants to make them happy. That's true, but I'm not going to let your snappy patter poison my petunias. I'd hardly call your material entertaining, much less fertilizer. Oh, don't you worry, Frank. The last thing I'll do is overwhelm your orchid. Your plants all seem clover it. Uh, <laughs> Not with these puns again. You're going to make all of my hard work wilt. Your humor is too dry for my impatience. Hey, hey! Not a daisy goes by where you don't get impatient. But hey, I'm just pulling your leg. Uh, will you just get out of here? My plants don't need your ridiculous jokes to grow. Go find an audience for your silly gag somewhere else. All right, all right, I'll grow. Ugh. But every dogwood has his day. <laughs> I'll still pop in from time to time. <laughs> You're still a little rough around the hedges. <laughs> Honestly, with him, I don't know how you can stand to be around him. Oh. What the hell was... Oh. It was on the name Wally. Okay, so that was adorable. <laughs> you know, I can't, I can't help it. It's, it's one of those things where you, towards the end, it's like, all right, the puns are actually getting me now. I'll, I'll, I'll roll with the, I'll roll with the humor. I'll roll with the joke. <laughs> so, yeah, good point. Um, why? Why is a clothespin buried in the ground there? While he's recording these, you think? Maybe. Yeah, a blue clothespin upside down. You know what? Oh, and this was the answer page. So there is something to observe here, obviously, because we have a whole bunch of clothespin people around somebody who is buried in the ground in the garden. And there was a joke made about using not even using Barnaby's puns for fertilizer. Now, it is pretty common knowledge that good fertilizer re re results in good plants. Here we have uh, <laughs> probably some very good fertilizer, which would be a being put in the ground. So there's a suggestion here of sacrifice, that's something that might be at play here, and a lot of witnesses to it. I still love Wally and the cake. <laughs> the obvious thing to allude to would be that uh, the clothespin... Oh. Oh, that's just happening right in front of us now. Oh. Wow. And they're two separate pages.
Well, look at Wally go. You gonna fill in the red one too? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, time to pick some flowers. Help, the yellow. Got another record. Okay. What are you waiting for? To hear me again? Ha ha ha. I think that means you can hear me. There's some odd music in the background of that one. Did you hear it? It's subtle. What are you waiting for? To hear me again? Ha ha ha. I think that means you can hear me. Hmm. And yeah, that does look like an eye. That is an eye in the center. Yeah. Okay. And will two. That's what an eye looks like. My eyes are black. What color are yours? Green and purple. Okay. <laughs> All right. So already we understand that the attention and growth of the website is allowing a lot more of Wally through. Like Wally is drawing right in front of us and leading us to new links to communicate. So we were very much correct to come back here. Even that is new. About us. Let's check out about us now. These pixel sprites appear to be new. Oh, there he goes. All right, this one is not linked. This one is. Only the blue one, huh? All right. What you got, Wally? I have more eyes than I did before. You know how to draw eyes. You draw mine many times. I know it is thanks to you, neighbor, that I can see. But it is still... I can't see. Okay, you remember what I was saying earlier when I said that in-universe, we fucked up? <laughs> yeah, I think we fucked up. Uh, let's hear that again. I have more eyes than I did before. You know how to draw eyes. You draw mine many times. I know it is thanks to you, neighbor, that I can see, but it is still, I can't see. Okay. Is anybody else getting the sense that what we've been doing here is just reviving a corpse? This has got to be an allusion to... How much attention is on the project now? Or... Or... How much art there is of Wally now? Literally drawing Wally and his eyes. How many eyes he has now out in the world? Online and offline, even. But he can't necessarily see through them. That I can see... But it is still, I can't see.
be. There's something that he can't see. So either the eyes are working, and he's talking about something else, or he knows how many eyes he has now through the art, through the creativity, through the sharing. But they're not working. And he does sound stressed. Well, okay, here we go. All right, then the night played by House will exit stage right. That is, if they show up to rehearsal. Then the maiden fair with golden hair greets her kingdom and asserts herself as the new queen of her domain. Ahem. As queen of this land, my first decree is to make hopscotch mandatory every day. Two pebbles all the way up to 20. No, 30 spaces. Hopscotch? That's not in the script. My second decree is filling our moat with scrumptious Brainberry ice cream. Up to the top, enough for all the citizens to enjoy. Brainberry? What is brain? Juliet Joyful! For my third decree... Julie! Sally! Those are not words! You've gone so far off the script that... that I'm not sure where we are anymore. Oh, don't worry. I know where we are, silly. We're in the Kingdom of Sweets, remember? I'm the beautiful maiden fair with the golden hair, the princess of pastries. Yes, yes. Who is now the queen of pastries? After a series of events where her father, the king of cake, gets eaten by a big, beastly, billowing bear made of broccoli. Oh, Sally, that scene was so sad. The story, Juliet. The story. Oh, right, right. So, after I show him who's boss, I go back to my palace and take back my throne. If you know the story this well, then why would the queen want to fill her moat with green berry ice cream or declare a hopscotch law after enduring a harrowing journey of self-discovery and vengeance? Oh, I don't know. She just seems like a fun lady. <sighs> okay. I suppose indulging in the finer things in life would make her character more well-rounded. All right, Juliet, proceed. Thank you, Sally. <clears throat> For my third decree, you all have to listen to me recite my favorite colors in order of my most favorite color to my least favorite. Starting now, pink, yellow, <sighs> no, 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 green, <laughs> blue, Such orange, is the green. life of artistic collaboration. Mm, moss. Wouldn't you agree, Wally? Mm. Every time it gets to Wally, it crashes. This this voice acting is delightful. Like it it was, it was fun with uh, Frank and Barnaby, and it just it keeps on getting better. What chemistry here? Is Wally's full name really Walliford? That's uh huh. Oh wow! Yeah, I see it. I see it being drawn. I see the star, but. Look at these! Oh, this is delightful! <laughs> oh, this is so, like, late 2000s. Speak to us, Walliford. A synthetic charm, thank you. Do you oh, like fuck. to draw? I do. Do you know how to draw an eye? First, you draw a circle. Then, you draw a smaller circle inside. Then, you color it in. Ooh. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, he's really driving home the point now. Ah! Gotcha. Well, I think I'm plenty funny, Barnaby. Frank thinks I'm a hoot and a half. Only a hoot and a half? What happened to the other half? <laughs> oh, you! Besides, Frank wouldn't know a good joke if it walked up to him, introduced itself, and handed him its business card. 
Punchline and all. He would, too. You know, Barnaby, you're not the only funny one in this neighborhood. Oh, yeah? You might be right, Julie. Howdy's a pretty funny fella, too. Not howdy me. I have a joke that will knock your hat off. I've been working on it all week. <laughs> oh, boy, all week? It took you that long? <laughs> you're hearing this, little buddy? Don't. I'll show you, Barnaby. <clears throat> what did the number three say to the number two after beating him in a game of checkers? Oh, no. Here it comes. I won! <laughs> that was just doggone terrible. Just awful. I think I'm gonna need a doggy bag. No, it was not, Barnaby. It was a good joke. Don't you get it? One is a number, but it also sounds like one. You know, when you, like when you won a game. Oh, oh, oh. Now she's explaining it. Oh, when will the agony stop? I'm just a little pooch in peril. <laughs> Bury me in my favorite sunny spot, kid. I'm going into the light. Oh. It's okay. It was funny. It was funny. <laughs> uh, but not as funny as part of me playing Ted. <laughs> All right. I am hesitant to go back into the neighborhood right away. Because so much might have changed that it's going to be a, quite a bit of exploration. Let's try news. Caterpillar. One of my favorites. Do you remember the caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland? And who, pray tell, are you? That caterpillar was so rude, but in fairness, so was Alice a little bit. So my brother Charlie tells my sister Dolly that our brother Barley's cousin Henry is turning over a new leaf. But if you ask me, Bon, a caterpillar's always turning over leaves. We just call it a salad. So you don't believe the poor guy? Sounds like you're just giving him the short end of the stick. Short end of the... We've given that clown the whole branch. So he's a clown too? Now you're speaking my language, Audi. You wouldn't believe what happened next. My brother Chuck wished our brother Buck good luck on getting that clock Henry to straighten up and fly right. Fly? Wait, wait, wait. He's a butterfly. I thought he was a caterpillar. <laughs> You're being a wise guy, Bon, but I'm serious. Then... You're not gonna believe this. Out of the blue comes our sister Sue and her brother Drew, talking to my <laughs> sister Dolly about getting Henry on a trolley to see Aunt Molly. Wooly ain't Molly. Wooly Aunt Molly, Bon. On my father's left hand side. My left, now yours. Maybe my upper left hand side. Oh, well, how could I get that confused? But long story short, Molly tells Henry to listen to our cousin Barley and my brother Charlie, who insists they're through with my sister Sue and her brother Drew. And to get back on that trolley and talk to Dolly about getting his act together. Oh, brother. No, no. Holly's my sister. <laughs> I know I can always talk to you, Bon. I tell you, having a big family ain't easy. Too many things to keep track of. You're right about that. I'm just listening in and I can barely keep track. The only family I gotta keep track of is my dear sweet mama. That's right. You know, next time she comes around, you ought to let me serve her one of my strawberry soda pops. Nobody makes him like you do, pal. Uh, speaking of which, how's that drink treating you? Okay, yeah. I'm inclined to believe what's already being theorized here. Um, we're seeing things through Wally's eyes, which is kind of concerning considering how little action there is because if we if we are imagining this and i know a lot of you are probably imagining this as well like the actual scene if we zoom out 
and we're watching it through the TV and the way it's set up is that you have all this action, all this liveliness between the character speaking and Wally is probably just sitting there staring, just motionless. It's creepy to think about, isn't it? Also, the writing has been superb all along, but this one really makes the writing stand out. Like, you need to have such a good mind for fun in your writing, especially comedic stuff, to make something like this work. And to, to do it with the air of bounciness, you know? Because you have to envision how this is going to come out in the voice acting and know exactly how you need to, to train your voice actors into it to make it sound as it, as it happened in your head. And that seemed to clearly happen here. <laughs> that seemed to clearly happen here. It just, it's coming across so wonderfully. It's such quality. Missing Dog says, Nick, I think it's because Clown implies that Wally eats with his eyes. So at least in this one, he isn't eating or drinking because I think his friends doesn't know he eats with his eyes. Red Blood Demon says, I got a small theory that could work. What if this is around the time the show is dying, hence why Wally is not as active? Or the reverse, where it's slowly coming back, which is why we're seeing clips now. Maybe. Stannard could be him zoning back in after dissociating, especially since it happens every time his name gets called. Possibly. I am going to go with the idea that we are seeing through Wally's eyes. And the stationary nature of it all is very... It suggests something about Wally from the viewer's perspective. If this were a clip from the show, that's... Disconcerting. We're humbled by the attention we have received, the support of our efforts, and the positive feedback to our findings. It has motivated us, dear neighbor, to share with you everything we have uncovered, something so substantial that it can no longer be denied. We have definitive proof that Welcome Home is real. We can finally hear them. We have uncovered Welcome Home audio recordings. Although some are in questionable condition, whether received through scratch vinyl records and barely comprehensible radio cuts, we have managed to retrieve a great deal. This is a momentous occasion for us as we continue to uncover Welcome Home's mysterious whereabouts, storybook audio, segments from what we believe to be an episode, and even an interview from a mysterious television host. Despite our best efforts, however, we have yet to trace the voices of anyone in the Welcome Home cast back to anyone in particular. No credits have been listed anywhere in our uncovered pieces, nor can we compare them to any existing voice actors. These are odd circumstances, but in due time, we are confident we'll find them. We've also discovered an interesting label and what we consider to be a new lead. Although we have very little to back up our speculation, we believe some of these newly acquired goods were manufactured by a toy company called Marlowe. However, upon researching or attempting to uncover any information about this business, we have been met with continuous dead ends. This has not deterred us, however. Just like Eddie Deer after an unfortunate tumble, we will also pick ourselves up and keep going. What else, we hear you ask, dear neighbor, has changed in this lovely home? So much, we cheer. So much. One may remember a mention of our special guest, the Question Answerer, a museum curator who had graciously come to us with an offer of spreading the word of welcome home to neighbors we had yet to know. We are happy to inform you all that the Playfellow exhibition was a wonderful success. Many individuals, both young and old alike, came to visit our happy home and explore our most recent findings. We are sad to say, however, that no one could recognize these playful puppets or that happy house named home. Still, so many eyes on our work have been gratifying and reassuring. This opportunity is once in a lifetime, after all. We are grateful to even showcase Welcome Home on a public scale such as that. Additionally, we are confident, with the question answerer's help, that more exhibitions are on the horizon. Keep an eye out, dear neighbor. I'm going to be watching pretty intently for any new mentions of eyes from now on. One final note to leave you on is a sad one. It is with a heavy heart that we at the Welcome Home Restoration Project must announce the closure of our guest book. Your support has been wonderful and reassuring, but it has overwhelmed our website to such a degree that we do not believe we can keep up. Yeah, I imagine so. 
we have placed a few of your signatures on our very last page, so please take a small visit before you are on your way. Perhaps one day it will reopen, but we will play by ear. I believe closing the guest book was a good idea anyhow. There are... There are images I don't remember uploading to decorate your messages. I don't know how they got there. But, please excuse those pesky bugs, dear neighbor. What is a beautiful home without a pest or two? We will do our best to keep things neat, tidy, and organized. We believe that concludes everything our beautiful website has to offer in this most recent update. As always, thank you for your patience and have a wonderful day. Don't forget to wave up high. There was news before this, too. So many guest signatures. So many of them are trying to communicate. What are you telling me for? Do you think I can answer? What are you trying to do to me? I'm closing that guest book. I'm not playing this game anymore. The ringing is enough. Oh. So yeah, the website curator is feeling more anomalous effects of what's going on. The ringing. Hmm. There's a bug. Oh, okay. Well, that's a cute one. Whoa! <laughs> halt, fellow thespian. The guest book is henceforth closed. <laughs> what a cute way to do this. Wow. Oh, that's adorable. What a cute touch. That's going the extra mile. All of this, of course, is going the extra mile, but that especially. <laughs> All right. Wally or Bug? Our last one was a bug. Let's check out what Wally has to say. I can't hear you. Do you know who I am? We've looked into each other's eyes so many times. You're looking at me now. Oh no. He actually doesn't know who he is. What the hell happened to Wally? This, this just deepens the mystery further of what's going on with Wally. To make him completely forget himself. To be aware at the same time that his eyes are growing. And we've been looking into his eyes. <sighs> he's embedded in the website. He's communicating through it. But he's lost his sense of identity. Out of all the puppets on this show... He is the only one who seems like a puppet. We'll open the guest book in a second, but bug time. There it is. Let's watch this one. Oh, oh. Pardon me, ma'am. Well, if it isn't our reliable yeah. mailman, either that or my delivery decided to sprout legs and go for a walk. No, nope, it's me. Sorry, I think I might have overestimated how much to bring in a time, howdy. No. No kidding. Uh, uh, say, Ed, no. how about you give my goods no. a break from your fumbling no. before they turn into bats? Oh, right. <sighs> oh, God. Yeah, oh, sorry about that. Howdy, I guess I'm... Um, just in a rush today, I'm a little behind with my delivery run. You don't say. I do say. I feel like I'm getting tossed around by my own parcels. What kind of life is that for a mailman? No life at all, Ed. But before you know it, I'll be back on schedule and back at the post office. I just got a new set of stamps I've been trying to organize. I can never decide between the color and the shape. But, oh, sign here, please. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sounds like a busy day ahead of you, Ed. Uh, speaking of busy, 
You remind me about a special order I need delivered. Oh, no, uh, <laughs> don't tell me. Uh, it's the bowling it's balls. It's the bowling Julie. balls Julie ordered. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. <clears throat> you got it, howdy. <clears throat> I'll get him to her faster than a... Faster than a bee, Karen. Wax to a honeycomb. Sounds good. Make sure it gets to jewels all in one piece. Right. Uh, can bowling balls break? I, uh, the, the, have a good day, you two. You have a good one, too, Ed. Oh, pardon me. <sighs> Boy, that fella can talk your ear off. Let's hope he doesn't run to anybody with that order, eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, yeah, more phenomenal voice acting here. It is so great to actually get to hear these characters, to get a sense of who they are. Sir Lazarus says, Wally's behavior in the videos really seems like to me like he's slowly degrading and the other puppets notice but can't do anything about it because the cameras are rolling and they're trying to get, trying to act around his behavior. Somebody else said, it seems that when Wally speaks, it's like he's processing. This all seems accurate to me. That there's there's a lot more hints here that Wally is just not okay. As the central figure here, he's he's just not doing okay. <laughs> he's like a side piece to everything, or just an observer more than anything else. If this was intentional within the show itself, then that makes Wally just somebody to introduce you to the neighborhood. And go around and just step aside and watch as things happen. Which would explain why the eyes are making him aware more. Why it's such a strong thing about the eyes. Ah. Which is why the pie charts must be Breen Berry. Mr. Deer, write that down. Breen Berry. You, you know, Julie... Uh-uh. President Joyful. Right, right, right. Pr President Joyful. I, I don't think Breen Berry's a real berry. I mean, shoot, what color even is Breen? That's classified, <laughs> Mr. Deer. That's why they pay me the big shamulas. What now? I ain't getting paid in anything, let alone sh shamus. Yeah. Sh 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 what what would you say again, President Joyful? Shamulas, doubloons, smolians, dinner. Can't you see what this company is all about, Mr. Deer? Uh, Breen? No, it's about pie charts, big buildings, hot cakes, small stuffed bears, chalk and houses. I don't think any of those things go together, quite frankly. It's about big suits and big hair and big voices. Mr. Deer, are you not confident in our business model? You have good shoulders under your head, Mr. Deer. I would hate to see you canned. Can me? But, but you can't fire me. It's my first day on the job. Then you'd better straighten up and fly down, Mr. Deer, because the most important part of running a business is... <clears throat> hmm. Hello, President Joyful of Everything Incorporated. What? Mr. Billy Nilly, no! We've... We're broke. They've eaten all our <laughs> office supplies. Even the staplers. We're out of business. No! <laughs> Whether letter or parcel, whether ranch snow or... Uh, I mean, joyful residents, who may I ask is calling. Oh, barn, good to hear from you. Yeah, we're playing business or something or other. Yep, yeah, I'd say we're fresh at it. Whatever we're supposed to be selling. I think this time it was Breen. Oh, yeah, he's right here. Phone call for you, one. The chemistry, oh, I am eating it up. Mm, the chemistry, the chemistry, it's so good. What excellent pairing with these VAs. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I really, I'm going to, I'm going to staple that to, to the, to the wall. Because that one, that's a highlight. <laughs> we're out of whatever we're selling this time. <laughs> And I love this running gag of the Breenberry thing. They're having so much fun. All right, carefully now. Let's scope around. 
I'm not about to be bitch made right away and go alt tabbing through. Let's try last page. It's very much the cut seems to be. Oh, hey! <laughs> well, would you look at that? I guess it is. Tab? The image says yes, turn the dial, PNG. <laughs> oh, page break. Elvira, but probably not the Elvira that uh, that I stand. Uh, let's see. It would be fun to go through the titles for some of these drawings later. It just it would take us forever here. That purple owl. It's another Bartaby. That one's from an upcoming game called Billy Bust Up. Really. Koala. This is a koala. <laughs> Toko. Howdy is too tall. I can't reach him. Okay. So it actually is popping up for me. You just might not be able to see it from your view. Oh, you know what's funny? The TV actually kind of resembles the uh the Cabin Fever Dreams TV a little bit, which is when we we introduced Welcome Home into into coverage. That's cool. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Welcome home neighborhood about us news gets back. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to keep I'm going to keep you in suspense. We're going to go to the neighborhood next and see what's there and then we'll visit the new stuff. That black gunk underneath ha uh, home is still visible. So below Did anything change? Oh! Yes, actually. There's something underneath Wally. Oh, no. Okay, kids. Brace yourselves. He's trying to turn the knob. He's trying to leave. This translates to hello since it's the house talking? It's Morse code. Really? Yeah. You know what? You could make that you could make that Morse code. There are longs and shorts there. I know people probably tore this apart in the first six hours. And we're coming in at well after the, the first six hours. Can you see me? That's okay if you can't. Don't worry. I know you're there. You know I'm here, too. I will talk to you. Is there going to be any tricks here? Yep. I thought so. Now the canvas is being painted on. Click here to view text transcripts of audio. That's the most. You're the most. Ha ha ha. You're 
it's so still. What are you doing? Look who's talking. How about we all play a game? I just thought of a new one. All we'll need is a pogo stick, a bowl of pasta, and a pair of roller skates. Somebody said to check page six of the guest book. Interesting. Okay. We'll hit that up in a moment. Oh, yeah. Yeah, some of these really do just take a moment, huh? Okay. Pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, and just a scoop of peanut butter. Gelatin works too, of course, but uh, I always like to spoil myself with a little something extra. But that's just between us. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm no gossip. I suppose gelatin can't always be relied upon, too. Still, I think it holds perfectly sliced fruit beautifully. I think that ought to mean something. You know what, Poppy? No one understands gelatin's potential. It's like they say, you eat with your eyes first. They do? Oh. Well, now you've got me worried about this new recipe, it's... It's not very, um, visually appealing. Oh, no, no, no. Forget what I said. We've worked so hard on this. In fact, I bet these could be shaped with one of my copper molds. You're right. Maybe that one you have shaped like a butterfly, Frank. Oh, that's right. Oh, such a shame butterflies aren't fond of seed, or muffins for that matter. This recipe could have saved my garden. Oh, dear. You know what? I'll try and think up a recipe that's sure to have them... Uh, to make your butterflies do a... Uh, hmm. Well, I'm not sure how to tell if a butterfly is happy. Whatever you decide well, to make, we'll have them all a flutter, Poppy. I think our experiment is done, too. Oh, you were so kind to say that, Frank. Oh, be careful. I wouldn't want you to burn yourself. I'm all right. You've taken all the necessary precautions to ensure my safety. Oven mitts, aprons, a second pair of oven mitts. Perhaps we could use a third pair of oven mitts. Poppy. You, you were working with such dangerous appliances. Who knows what could happen at a moment's notice? Oh, goodness gracious, just thinking about it is making my feathers fall out. No, no, no. Don't get yourself started, Poppy. I would rather be careful than throw caution to the wind anyhow. Besides, we're all safe and sound here. Wouldn't you agree? You eat with your eyes first, huh? Hmm. So that's Poppy that we've heard now for the first time. You eat with your eyes first. Eddie's purple. I tell you, I fold my letters flatter than a fritter. And when it comes to friendship, I always deliver. Oh, and another bug. Cool. Hello, Mr. Deer. I'm here about your emergency. Oh, thank the stars you're here, Frank. Oh. I, I mean, Mr. Frankly, we're in a heap of trouble. There's some kind of, you know, like a, it, it's like... If you, you ever seen like, uh, but it's a, uh, it's like a whatchamacallit in here. A whatchamacallit? I'm afraid I only deal with bugs, Mr. Deer. <laughs> a bug? A critter? A guest? A neighbor? Whatever it is, it's upheaving my whole post office. Just look at what it's done with the paper chains. It made these. It did a wonderful job. Maybe you should consider hiring it. Real cute. I'm being serious here. Oh, there's nothing to be so scared of. It's more frightened of you than you are of it, you know. Scared? Of a friendly guy like me? I wouldn't even hurt a fly. I don't think you could even look at a fly with how you're hiding from this beetle. Hey, don't go knocking a fella down when he's in a fit of desperation. If you had a rogue envelope fluttering around your home, I'd get there lickety-split. I'll take that into consideration next time that happens, Mr. Deer. See? Not so intimidating, is it? I suppose you're right. But it's easy for you to say so. I don't know these fellas on a first-name basis like you do. 
you don't need to be familiar with them in order to get to know them better. They're just like you or me. In fact, you're not scared of them, are you? Okay, that's a cute one. Yeah, the, uh, the map here does look a little bit spiffier than it did last time. That's cleverly hidden. Boom. Hmm. Do I want potatoes again? Or do I want chips? Well, when the chips are down, they're both sort of the same. <sighs> to an ordinary person, maybe. But chips are a bit heavier for a performer. I don't want to get a stitch while I'm rehearsing my dance moves. And it slows my creative thinking. No, no, no. I've decided. Boiled potatoes, it must be a game. Well, shucks, Sally. If you're looking for a healthy change for a gal on the go, look no further than this sensational new instant mash. Instant? Or faster, guaranteed. All you do is add water and whoosh, a fluffy mashed tater masterpiece. Dinner for one, three, twenty, cast to thousands. Whatever you want, they're lighter than air, too. Won't weigh you down, or your wallet. I give it my five-star rating, and those are the golden kind. Oh, my! That does sound convenient, especially with my hectic schedule. Let's see. Bubble Blast Soap Flakes. Oh, what a strange name! Ha! <laughs> yeah, it's a marketing thing. Makes them sound squeaky clean for your diet, eh? Oh, Barbie. Well, yes, I suppose it does. <laughs> All right, then. I'll take one of those boxes of Bubble Blast Instant Mash, mm -hmm. a bag of Old McDonald's porridge oat, Oops. one loaf of bouncy yellow bread, Sponge. and a box of that nice new sunshine cereal you introduced me to last week. Oh, wait, Blood it's choices howdy. are the only choices you can make at this store. But you've got a knack nonetheless, Miss Starlet. Oh, and a pint of milk. Thank you. There you go. Service with a smile. Oh, I didn't see you there. What can I get you for you today, Wolf? <laughs> I could have sworn for a minute that was actually Barnaby playing a trick. Oh, jeez. Let's see. Media, Merchandise, and Playfellow. In the order that we're seeing it right now, Media is up first. Let's hit it. Media. Slowly but surely, we've, been, we've begun to uncover Media that confirms Welcome Home was once on the air. These remnants can be found below, including animation cells, radio plays, scripts, songs, and even interviews meant to publicize the show as it aired. One day, we hope to share footage derived from full episodes on this very page. We know it is out there. We will find it soon. Oh, good. It's all in one page. Cool. Okay. Live interview audio segment. This audio appears to have been part of a live television interview. Evidently, shortly after Welcome Home began to air and was a subsequent critical darling. Hello, bug. Though no video footage has been unearthed, we were lucky to recover audio from a significant chunk of the interview, featuring Wally Darling and Barnaby B. Beagle in conversation with the host. We invite you to listen to the charming dialogue yourself by clicking the player below. Mm, but I do want to catch this bug first. Delivery here. I got delivery here from one Miss Partridge, courtesy of Howdy's dependable door-to-door-to-door -door -door delivery service. Oh, oh, my feathers. Howdy, you frightened me. Terribly sorry, ma'am. Suppose I should have known. Oh, no, no, that would have frightened me too. Um, oh, is that my order of yarn? Thank you. It sure is, Poppy. Hot off the shelves just the way you like them. Oh, looks like you already got a hoard that make a dragon jealous. What you need even more yarn for? Not that I'll turn down a sale. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I'm just working on some scarves and sweaters and such. I want everyone in the neighborhood to have something warm to wear in when you know, winter comes along. Feels like these changing seasons keep sneaking up on me. Uh, I hear that. Not enough daylight to get everything done. Of course, it helps to have an extra pair of hands. 
<laughs> Seems like you know that already, though. I can see you've recruited an extra pair of your own today. Oh! <laughs> I know the video's quiet. There's nothing I can do. This one's quiet. I was worried I was going to get all tangled up with all these colors of yarn. Hmm. I can see why. It's a real risk. It, it is? Well, sure. But lucky for you, I think I might have something to help. Behold! <laughs> no, no, nothing to fear here. What you're Ooh. looking at is a bona fide yarn spinner. Perfect for keeping all your extra neatly spooled up. Safe. Effective and no pesky batteries or electricity to fret over. Oh, oh. <laughs> that does sound helpful, doesn't it? Sure does. Yeah, <laughs> tell you what. Today only, as an extra special deal for an extra special customer, you can give her a whirl. No strings attached. Well, no strings but they oh. are, that is. <laughs> 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 well, I've already overstayed my welcome. What? Got a whole shipment back at the shop I've got to sign for. Oh, but... I'll check in on you and your new wonder device next time oh, I bring God. you an order, Poppy. Oh. Till then. I don't know how to work these things, but if you were so insistent, it'd be helpful. Do you think you can help me think of this? So this video confirms what we've been suspecting through the other bug-catching endeavors. We're watching this through Wally's eyes, because those were clearly his hands this entire time, uh, helping out with the knitting. And yep, as soon as Wally is actually spoken to properly, as if he's going to have a line, that's when things change. This is, this is our best confirmation of what's been suggested by the other clips. Alright, let's listen to this. Sound like you have a lot going on in that neighborhood. And that's a... Uh, Welcome home. Yes, yes. All that beautiful world. Welcome home. Oh, since the show's really taken off, Wally, I'd say you're quite the popular character now. I am? You are. I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, yes. And you're quite a little charmer, too, from what I heard. You're not so bad yourself. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Hey, that's exactly it. Is that why they call you Wally Darling? They call me Wally Darling because that's my name. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. You know, you're very beloved by a lot of different people now. Do you find yourself in any sort of romances lately? Hmm? Romance? Yes. A love life? Being so popular at all? Oh, no. I don't know. I love everyone. I love my friends. Oh! Oh, well, that's right. You've got a lot of friends in that neighborhood. In fact, I think you said you brought one in for us to meet. Is that right? Yes, it's my best friend. He's my neighbor, too. His name is Barney B. Beagle. <laughs> hey, oh, 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 hello. How are you doing, Rick? Barnaby B. Beagle. Mr. Beagle, a pleasure to have you here. Hey, enough with the formalities. Beagle is my mother's name. Just call me Barn. Oh, is that right? She was a dog, too? Oh, no, no. She's a chicken. You might have heard of her. She's a real famous lady. She crossed the road once. She crossed the road? <laughs> what for? To get to the other side. They're still talking about it to this very day. <laughs> well, oh, to this very day. Wally, you certainly live amongst a colorful array of characters. It's no wonder you've come into stardom recently. So how are you two handling the attention? I've been destined for show business since I was just a puppy. Who wants a couple more eyes to the well-known comedian like me? As long as they're not throwing tomatoes at me, it sounds like a walk in the park. I tell you, 
We got a neighbor who's got an arm like a professional baseball player. It's not easy. Oh, <laughs> well, I've ducked a few tomatoes in my own time. Uh, it sounds like a handful, Bon. What about you, Wally? What do you think of all this newfound fame? I think it's just the most. <laughs> Okay, so that was cute. <laughs> what the what the fuck is going on with you guys? Seriously, okay, now hold on a second, hold on, because l listening to that voice, you don't think that's Howdy's actor? Because I could I could definitely hear them doing that voice, because there's like a New York accent kind of thing about it. I could hear them doing I could hear them doing it. Listen, you really think I'm cool enough that clown would approach me for something like this for a bit? Come on. I don't know. My bet is Howdy's actor. That was cute. If there is anything to glean from that interview, though. I would say that Wally sounds the same even... Even on live TV. Which is interesting. It's just... Wally is so monotone compared to um Barnaby these animation cells oh my god I am eating these up these are delightful look at these seriously oh where is it <laughs> let's see now right over left under and through, fold on this side, down, up and around, pass it through and pull. There. A perfectly tied croquet tie. Frank! Frank! Hmm? Oh, hi, Julie. Come on in. Frank, we're almost ready to start hula hoop bowling croquet! I know, Julie. Wait. Bowling? You can't just mm -hmm. keep putting bowling in other games, Julie. Remember bowling basketball? I sure do. You got mad because Barnaby kept winning. Well, now I have to change. What? Why? Because now I'm in the wrong bow tie. You're in your bowling dress. I can't show up in my croquet bow tie. Oh, there's not that really matter. Of course it matters. Well, why? It just wouldn't be right. It's like, uh, well, take our games, for example. It wouldn't be fun if there weren't rules, right? <sighs> it could be. No, no, no. Remember what happened when you tried playing hopscotch to the max? I do. It took us an hour to get you down off Howdy's roof, and we still don't know where the green chalk went. I still won? So you say. But it wasn't fun for me. Oh, that's true. You were pretty grumpy, even though you did help me get all the leaves out of my hair. Exactly. I like it when there's rules. I, I like knowing what I'm supposed to be doing. I, I like it when things are organized or done right. When things are so... When they're just... Uh, just... Just... So? Yes! Just so! <laughs> <laughs> The way I tie my bow tie, just so. Oh! I know how to tie the loop around and exactly how to pull. Or like the way you keep your garden all in rows. Yes! That way I always know where each plant will grow. I think I get it now. You just like everything neat and tidy and sure and careful and organized in a row. Like a bow, just so! Right! <laughs> sort of. So if you'll give me a moment, I can find the right bow tie, and... Uh -oh. I'll get it! Hi, Molly, come on in! Hi, Julie. Hi, Frank. Home wanted to know if it can play croquet, too. <gasps> of course! Well, I don't see why not. Oh, swell. 
Is there <clears throat> something else, Wally? No. Oh, Wally, we were just talking about how Frank likes things just so. Just so? What's that mean? It's, it's like pies and books and gay girls and gardens. Get it? No, but I'd like to understand. Oh, not you two. It's just, well, uh, think of a box of crayons. Okay. The colors go a certain way. Do they? They do after Frank steals the box when you're not looking. Julie! <laughs> Maybe you should go get the game set up at home's front yard. Oh, good idea! I have to move the croquet hoops and tell Sally we're moving the opening ceremonies. Thank you, Julie. Oops. You're not using hula hoops, are you? Hi, Frank! Julie, you know that's our regulation. <laughs> Bye, Julie. I don't mind that you reorder my crayons. My point is, it's like a rainbow. Like how the colors in a rainbow go. Oh, I like it best when red goes in front of the rest. And the colors all stay inside the lines When each and every hue From orange, yellow, green, and blue And purple Right! Sometimes things have an order that their context demands And everybody loves the way I wear boots on my hands Barnaby! What are you? It's not even raining! Why are you wearing those? Hey, Croquet, the one where you ride horses? I'm the horse. No, that's Polo. Marco. Oh, why are you here? Came to get Wally. Hi, Barnaby. Hi, Wally. We're singing a song, Barnaby. Hey. Okay, so... We don't need to hear all of this in order to truly understand it. Okay, well, first, just on a quality metric, uh, VA for Frank Frankly has been doing great all along, but this this is their this is their best. This is the best I've heard them. Uh, this this is wonderful chemistry between everybody. This is wonderfully done. What is immediately apparent with this audio sample is that our perspective when it comes to Wally and the cast is turned immediately on its head. In all of our other situations, seeing things through Wally's eyes before he suddenly gets summoned for his line, he seems to be just a nice observer figure, quiet until he has to speak. But in this instance, we're actually getting a perspective of Wally through the others. And it's not just about the monotone when it comes to their reactions. You can tell that around him, they feel a little bit strange. That Wally is a little bit strange beyond the monotone. He is the only one who does not truly seem alive or understand things around him. There is something off with Wally. Like you just, you could hear it in the way that they reacted. The awkwardness. Like, oh, he he entered the room. There was a, a, a caution there. The way that they're relating to him is highly suggestive that even they feel something's not quite right with Wally. It could be that he's supposed to learn with the viewers during episodes, but you don't need to be that flat in order to present a character like that especially compared to the rest of the cast who are so vibrant, so alive. You don't need to be that withdrawn and that ha, ha, ha. I mean, even the laugh sounds robotic. Howdy do, fellas. What can I get for you two today? Hiya, howdy. Uh, I think we're going to enjoy ourselves the usual. My usual for my usuals? Come on right up, Pally! The usual? I thought we were getting hot dogs. That is our usual, little buddy. It means something you and me get all the time. Kind of like a morning perusal. Oh, 
You mean our walk? Yeah, but I like perusal better. Makes me feel like a fancy high-class pooch. A... Wally truly cannot put concepts together, or he is... See, now it's hard, because he is supposed to be the audience surrogate, and this is a children's show. It's supposed to be kind of an educational thing as well as entertainment, so it's hard to gauge in these instances whether it's Wally really being wrong, or Wally acting exactly as the audience surrogate here for children who are learning concepts for the first time. Pedigree with some degrees, if you will. Oh. Alrighty, I got a bloodhound and a whirlwind of trouble and an old reliable dog. So, what's the gap today, Bon? Well, I got a good one that's been brewing in this bottom mine all uh -huh. day. <clears throat> what do you call a caterpillar after a month-long nap? A butterfly. But if you ask me, I call the poor guy a doctor. <laughs> Wait, what? Hold on. What's the gap today, Bon? Well, I got a good one that's been brewing in this bottom mine all uh -huh. day. <clears throat> what do you call a caterpillar after a month-long nap? A butterfly. But if you ask me, I call the poor guy a doctor. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you'd call a doctor. <laughs> That's a hoot. A holly, even. You always never disappoint. Hmm. Say, Wally, what about you? You got any silly yarns for me today? No, but I have a joke. <laughs> what did I tell you? He's a natural. That was just a taste. Go on, kid. Okay. How does Barnaby eat his hot dog? I don't know. How? He relishes it. He sure does. Boy. Y'all getting the hang of this funny business, Walls. It won't be long before you're the one paid for these hot dogs. That's okay. I like when Barnaby buys them. It's like I said, howdy. We're a couple of usuals who know what we like. Hey, the kids got jokes. Hey, Bill Live said, silly fact. Clown said that if Wally falls, he'll just lay there on his face until somebody comes and picks him up. <laughs> Julie, good morning. No, I, I can't right now. I'm watering my plants, see? Oh, I do see. Oh, I hear them, too. Gee, they sure have a lot to say. Uh, what? My soul and Lyco? What are they saying to you? Oh, shush, shush. Hold on just a second, Frank. They're telling me right now. What? What? Mm -hmm. what? Uh-huh. What? I, oh. Uh... Oh, I see. Try to water oh, don't say. The well, well what, what did they say? Well, your tomatoes think you have a very lovely bow tie today. They do? I... Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you. What else are they saying? Well, they also think your marigolds could be a little merrier. But I wouldn't say that in front of your flowers. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll see what I can do. Mm. They also had one last thing to say. They think that you've done such a good job gardening that you should go play jump rope with Julie to celebrate. <sighs> <laughs> oh, Julie, you were fibbing about the tomatoes telling me all that, weren't you? Oh, no, Frank, I was telling the truth, honest. Your miracles really are very, very rude. <laughs> Okay, Eddie, Sally, and Poppy, acting. Mail call. I got mail here for Miss Partridge. And I will say, the Julie and Frank bit there, mm, that is that is excellent chemistry. Again, like, the, the more we go into some of the stuff with Frank, it's like I'm hearing excellent performances. Um, everybody's excellent. Seriously, it's just, it, there's so much gold here. There really is. I'll be taking that. Uh, uh. 
pardon me for asking, but... Your pardons. Well, I could have sworn this was Poppy's bar. I might have made a wrong turn at that game of hopscotch outside of Julie's house. Those games always get me turned around. Of course this is her barn mailman. But she just so happens to have her feathers full at the moment. Uh, oh, <laughs> hello, dearie. I'm right here. At least, I, I think I am. Oh, goodness, it's hard to see past all this yarn. Oh, darling, what has she got you wearing? Can't you see she is a beautiful beanstalk? The perfect outfit for the star of my next play. Oh, yes, I forgot to ask what this role is for. It was a bit sprung on me. It is for Jack and the beanstalk, obviously. But I have taken some artistic liberties, of course. I call this rendition... Wait for it. Sally and the beanstalk. Oh, boy. Uh, so... Sally and the Beanstalk is a little like that story about that fella who traded some cows for a couple of beans. For the same beans that eventually grow into a giant beanstalk he decides to climb up. Yes. Climb? And then he runs into that big, mean old giant at the top. The very same who chases Jack all the way down to the bottom. Oh, yes, yes. Giant? And when Jack gets to the bottom, doesn't he cut down the beanstalk with a big axe? Yes, yes, that's exactly it. But it will be yours truly as the one with the big axe instead. Big axe? <laughs> oh, Poppy, don't worry. After some rehearsals, you will feel as strong and as sturdy as the role you were born to play. It's just, in, in all seriousness, though, it is so lovely to hear all of this, to hear the life. And just for a project, it's incredible in terms of fleshing out the world and selling it to sell the concept. Because far too many people don't understand in their projects the idea of lean and fat, okay? Okay. A good project, hear me now, a good project is like a good burger. It's going to be mostly meat, okay? And there's going to be a percentage of fat. But don't you dare have too much fat, or it's just going to be nasty, all right? You need mostly meat, mostly content, mostly substance, stuff that moves the plot forward, stuff that delivers, okay? And then little bits of fat. Some levity, some world building, some flavor, even even moments of downtime between big story segments. Stuff to sell it. You can, of course, be leaner in your approach, but honestly, a lot of people I've seen I've seen projects where it's like, get the show on the road, please. You know? <laughs> you're you're enjoying your time too much. You're letting the camera roll well beyond what it should. So, Welcome Home does not have that issue. It truly does not. Because even inside of stuff that seems fatty, you have genuine content. You have things that you can extrapolate. Okay, the tireless research of the Welcome Home Restoration Project has revealed an absolute plethora of merchandise created during the heyday of Welcome Home. From toys to books, records, greeting cards, all the way to your favorite breakfast cereal. There was truly no shortage of ways to bring your favorite neighbors into your own home. We have cataloged a few of our findings below and will continue to add more as new discoveries are uncovered and restored. Oh, the phone! It's for you! Talking telephone toy. Dated 1971, manufactured by Marlow Inc. We're very lucky to have recovered this item, packaging and all, and restored the toy to original working order. Our research suggests it was an officially licensed toy from the Playfellow Workshop that had partnered with a company called Marlow. The packaging suggests that many versions of these phones were sold, each themed to one of the neighbors. But as of writing, we have only been able to recover the Wally Darling theme phone. Click the buttons below to listen to the audio recovered from this delightful device. Note, the audio for Wally Darling is experiencing a glitch and has been temporarily taken offline. Please be patient as we work to restore this as soon as we possibly can. I wonder why.
Oh, I guess it's not offline. just a little fuzzy like me. Speaking of, do you know who I am? <sighs> oh, no. Well, that's not neighborly at all. We've never met before. But don't worry, even though you and I haven't spoken before, I've seen you every time you have looked into my eyes. I want to know, what did you see? I hope you saw a friend. But I'm not sure you saw a name. Stand still. Let's start over. Ring, 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 click. Hi, I'm Wally. I'm so happy to finally meet you. I think you're the absolute most. Uh-oh. I have to go now. Everyone is probably thinking about that strange phone call. It is funny to think about. Ha, ha, ha. Don't worry, though, neighbor. It will be a little joke. Between you and me, you have to go too. You have work to do. Remember, until you hear me again, keep your smile merry and always know that I love you very much. Goodbye. Mortimer says this message was for the team at the recovery project. I can see that being the case. I'm starting to get the sense, and this this should seem obvious, I suppose, but Wally is being puppeteered. Is he just an extension of home and whatever is infecting home? Because that's where we find the infection throughout all of the imagery. Wally is a puppet here, and home is alive. Home speaks at points while Wally is speaking. It's almost like home is not haunted, home is the haunting. What's the motive though? Well, you know, that's the kind of thing that always develops further along in a project. That's not something that ever gets really given up early, unless you're trying to tell a different kind of story. But I can see this being a recording for the restoration team. 
I can see that very much, especially with the line, you have work to do. But so do we in the website, because there's obviously more. We have work to do ourselves. It acts like it's Wally, like Wally knows his name, sort of, or just has an idea of what he's supposed to say in this instance. So Lady Beige is asking, okay, I got a question. These are all literal puppets, so someone is controlling all of them. This would normally include both Wally and Holmes. So the question is, did the infection just hit the puppets, or did it hit the puppeteers too? That is an excellent question, because again, there is the reality of the people, the actual flesh and blood people involved in this project. Hey Bell Live said, hey Nick, things clown has said that Barnaby taught Wally R how to tell jokes, how to laugh, and how to sleep. As in, Wally lays there with his eyes closed and says, I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping, over and over. Mags has rabies, says, do you think Wally got possessed slash hijacked by home or whatever else has taken control of him sometime after that interview recording we heard? I know he was still quite deadpan in that interview, but it feels like he's progressively losing himself more and more. I think it's been years of this happening and it's slowly becoming more noticeable, like a process. The feeling I've got is that Wally is the only true, well, no, but there's, there's supposed to be more of a sense for us that Wally is more of a puppet than the other puppets are. There is something puppeteering him, I think. If he does not have sentience of his own, there is something working through him. And I am damn sure it's coming through home. Juan asks, did the possession begin affecting children, which is why all the products were recalled and destroyed? That would be my takeaway. So, that's Wally's call. Let's hear the others. We'll start with purple. With a letter or parcel, with rain, snow, or shine, we weather the weather and never decline. This is Eddie Deer of Eddie's Post Office speaking. How can I help you today? Hello? <laughs> is anybody there? Should I say the jingle again? Hi, okay. Eddie. <clears throat> Where the letter or parcel, where the rain, snow, or shine, we weather the weather and never decline. This is Eddie Deer of Eddie's Post Office speaking. Do you need stamps? I got them. Envelopes and paper? You bet. Marcus, crayons, glue, glitter, tape, staples? <gasps> I got that too. <sighs> I just, I know we're not even close to done here, but I just gotta say, this is one of the most delightful projects I've ever had the privilege to cover in my career. I am so, so extremely happy this exists and that this has received as much love as it has. And again, like I said on Friday during Buy a Bear Day, this is why you support creators in this field. Online, financially, if you are able to, even as much as a dollar or two. Because this is what happens when you give them your support. When you give truly dedicated, driven, talented people the support that they need. Do I think there's a connection between the message in the update section talking about ringing and this phone? Oh, Oh, maybe. Hey, Bell Live says, Just thought it was interesting that Cloud has said that queerness and ableism are strong themes in this. I wonder how that will affect the storyline it's building now. Yeah, I can, I can see it. I can see it. Eddie's big lift. <laughs> Storybook record. Rare find indeed. We were able to recover not only the complete original audio from this Welcome Home Storybook record, but several illustrations speculated to have been part of either the record packaging or complimentary storybook. Listen below as the neighborhood comes together to challenge the might of resident reliable mailman Eddie Deer. Oh boy. Well, it's a showstopper of an idea, Julie. I'll give you that. But I just don't believe it's possible. No, it's true. I swear, I swear. Oh, what is it you two are making a ruckus over this time? Oh, hi, Frank. I thought you 
you said you were going to spend another quiet morning organizing your bow ties. How could anyone effectively organize anything with you two talking so loudly at one another? Hey, butterfly. So, but they just won't leave my tomatoes alone, and who am I to shoo them away? Isn't a beetle just as permitted to partake of my plants as I am, Julie? Positively, absolutely, Frank. But I've taken such good care of them. I read to them every day and water them the perfect amount. Oh, you do. You go a whole book on them and read them the water on their little heads and everything. Julie, I'm serious. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Frank. I'm only teasing. You know, if this is bothering you so much, you should have a little sign just for those bugs. It can say, Terrific tomatoes. Look, but don't touch. <laughs> What makes you think they're going to be able to read all that? Well, they've got big, beautiful eyes, don't they? Like big old saucer plates. Oh, Julie, don't be so rude. You wouldn't like it if they said that about you. Said what about me? How lovely my hair is. That I put just the right amount of polish on my horns. <laughs> no, more like that Julie Joyful with her nose like an orange. Oh? If they said that, they'd also probably say, Oh, that Frank Frankly with that banana on his face. Banana? <laughs> well, if they're going to be so rude in my garden, maybe it's best that they don't get to partake of any more tomatoes then. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, how are we going to keep them out? Maybe Howdy's got something in his shop. Oh, Howdy is more inclined to sell us canned laughter than he is to sell us something actually useful. Besides, I don't think he likes my rendition of a flea and a fly. No, oh, don't be impressed. I'm sure we can come up with a wonderful joke between the three of us. Isn't that right? Oh, well, good thing the popping started just before the end. Yeah, no, we haven't seen this one. This one was uh, different. A different scene in the garden. Crispy sweets? Wow! <laughs> that is so cute. Wally Darling's coloring book. Don't know how long this is. Hey, Clown, what's up? Go ahead, everybody. Love on Clown. Love on Clown and the and the, the VA's friendly Frankenstein synthetic charm. Puzz was here, I think, if Puzz is still around. Anybody else who's, whose usernames I do not know yet, who's been slyly hanging out in here. <laughs> but yes, as always, Clown, thank you for everything. Thank you to the whole team for everything. Your absolutely delightful, beautiful work. Oh! Can't hide from us. Please, does Poppy see Punch who asked me to make this cake for you? Really, I... I... Well, it's such an honor. Oh, I'm sure it is, darling. Now, let's get down to brass tacks. Oh, uh, well, I don't think I have any of those. I don't like to keep anything too sharp around here, you know. Details, Poppy dear. Details. Ah, oh, of course, of course. <laughs> now, now then, uh, what do you think you'd like? <laughs> what would I like? Poppy dear, this is going to be on stage. It's hardly a like. It's a need. And it needs to be big. Bold. Ah, the big, <laughs> big, yes. Uh, maybe three tears, sir? Only three? <laughs> oh, dream bigger, Poppy. Oh, ah, uh, uh, yes, yes. I suppose it is a big neighborhood. Better to play it safe. 
<laughs> you know, I, I do love to play it safe. Uh -huh. But not too safe. After all, this needs to be a showstopper. It needs to have beauty, pizzazz, gasp, danger. Danger? Oh, well, feathers, I don't know how I feel about making a dangerous cake. Uh -uh, but, 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 my feathered friend, you'll do great. I'm certain of it. There's no one else in the neighborhood I would trust with this. <laughs> and not just because you're the only one here, you can make something that doesn't come out of a gelatin mold. Oh. oh. <laughs> well, goodness me, you're going to make me blush. Oh. So, I take it you have everything you need? Oh, uh, well, not quite. See, what I, when I asked what you'd like, I thought maybe you would have a flavor in mind. A what? A flavor. <laughs> you know, uh, we could do chocolate or vanilla or sprinkles, buttercream, butterbell, butterscotch. Oh, uh, uh, <clears throat> to be honest with you, I didn't think that far. You, you didn't, you didn't think about the flavor. Well, well, the audience can't taste it from their seats, now can they? Oh, what is this? Hmm. Yeah, lots of Wally hand this time. Something strikes me about these segments, by the way, that I, I wanted to bring up. I was thinking about it earlier, but I've kind of been waffling on the point, but I do want to say it now, because after watching this, I'm more inclined to address this idea. It's strange, though. Um... I'm not entirely sure if all of these moments are scenes on screen. They could be, but there's something about them that doesn't feel as television acted. Is anybody else getting that vibe? Yeah, they do. They feel candid. They almost feel in-universe. It doesn't feel performative. It just feels more genuine. Which, it could be part of the show, but it's also... I don't know, I just... I'm not willing to count out the idea that these are candid moments, which would be very tough to explain in the bigger circumstance. But yeah, it is. It's like Lita Phoenix just said. It literally feels like you're listening to your neighbors converse and gossip. You're just there. I mean, even, even the shot that we had once of the trees, right? The trees and the sunshine is highly suggestive of it's not a stage. It's not happening on a stage. New Plays Gaming says the puppets are alive. That would explain why there are no human actors listed anywhere. Yeah, because we do have to remember the point that for all the work that's been done, we cannot trace any actors. We can't trace personnel, puppeteers, voices. But Wally isn't talking because the cameras aren't rolling? Yeah. We're being told more through these segments than meets the eye. If they're not on TV, then where are they, Mortimer asks, with the cheers, thank you. That's the question, isn't it? On the interview, they were talking to the characters way too like they were real. Yeah. There's something happening here. Maybe this is just the way that the show goes sometimes, but it doesn't feel so performative. This is something to keep in mind. The Playfellow Exhibition. This is a big one. Our goal at the Welcome Home Restoration Project has always been to explore Welcome Home's disappearance, to catalog what few fragments we could find, and to seek out others who could have seen the show for themselves. It has been difficult to produce evidence of its existence, even more to find others who had heard of it. There were times where we were unsure if this website was even accomplishing what it was made for, and if it was worth keeping up at all. However, this doubt was quickly silenced when we were contacted by a successful museum curator by the name of The Question Answerer. A totally legit name. Absolutely. 
<laughs> Through this collaboration, we were allowed the privilege to go public with our findings and to share the sentiment of welcome home with as many eyes and hearts as possible with the Playfellow exhibition. For their safety, they have agreed to this title and to a phase of anonymity as we have. Oh, so it's... They, they gave the title. Okay. Introduction to the exhibition was as follows. Critically praised and financially successful, Welcome Home dominated its Saturday morning time slot with its colorful cast of puppets, entertaining and addictive stories, and lively sets unlike anything seen before. Created and produced by the Playfellow Workshop, Welcome Home is believed to have had a four-year run from October 11th, 1969. Well, mark the date, everybody, October 11th of this year. <laughs> Until its abrupt pull from television sometime in 1974. In the time since... All footage and merchandise of the entertainment powerhouse has been presumed lost. In recent years, however, the small collective at the Welcome Home Restoration Project have been able to compile, restore, and archive what few remnants of Welcome Home have been uncovered. Through their efforts, the team hopes to awaken the memory of this lost piece of media. We at Questions Answered Curatorial Services are honored to be able to showcase the WHRP's findings and to help further the goal to restore and rediscover the world of Welcome Home. Below are photographs of the space. Whole gallery. Cool. And again, Cloud and team going above and beyond for this project here. Truly special. Wow. Look at the packaging. Like, the standee is amazing. And and the packaging. <laughs> this is just so above, you know? This is so delightful. Oh. Please play. Yeah, Wally's reflection there. Let's see if we can find him quick. Oh, look at all the character sheets. Oh, wow. <laughs> Wally and home. Wally Darling Replica Puppet Replica 2020 While we have yet to recover any screen-used puppets, this replica has been faithfully reproduced based on resources such as sketches, script notes, eyewitness recollections, and the occasional screen test footage such as the photo displayed here. Unlike many of the other neighbors, we have yet to find a Wally Darling Puppet design sheet. Well, he's one of a kind. Isn't he? The question answerer has taken great care in preserving these findings and helping to reproduce what couldn't be properly presented. They have also helped us to restore what was assumed to be completely destroyed vinyl records and the It's For You Marlowe brand talking telephone. We asked the question answerer what drew them into our search for this lost media. They responded, It seems like everything these days is already neatly catalogued and answered down to the finest details. You can find a book or a website or what have you to answer any old question that might cross your mind. But Welcome Home was different. The more I looked at it, the more questions there were, and not an answer in sight. It was like a puzzle box that had never been opened before, just begging to be investigated. How could I possibly resist a mystery like that? Especially in such a charming, colorful package. It was like a calling. A calling I just had to answer. Additionally, we asked how they enjoyed the experience when it ended. What could possibly compare? Holding all these puzzle pieces in your hands, looking into Wally Darling's sweet eyes, <sighs> hearing that little toy phone ring for the first time since the 70s, there's truly nothing like it. I still have so many questions to answer here in the world of Welcome Home. So much work left to do. If it was a calling that brought me here, well, then that phone is still a ringing. Again with hearing a ringing. 
Although we were unsuccessful in finding strangers familiar with the show, we consider this exhibition a monumental success for allowing individuals both young and old alike to experience Welcome Home for themselves. A big boisterous thank you to those of you who came to visit this lovely home. Here's the hoping we can do this again, neighbor. We hope we will see you there. Don't forget to wave up high. Yep, here we go. Oh, this page is called Understand. Do you like home? Home is my house. Do you have a home too? Do you hear it too? You can hear mine. Yep. His eyes are still here. <laughs> All right. Because this one is a bit more hidden, check answer in the text. What page? It is play for, under playful. Okay, answer, 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 answer. Aha. Thank you, Michael. Oh, well, what the hell? Okay. Password. Testing. Welcome home. No. Welcome home. You. Nope. Welcome neighbor. No. Tested every character's names and none of them work. No, no. Still no. Also no. Tried every code from the notebook. Notebook. Nope. Code is five characters. Worksheet is five questions. Key? Is it the questions that are key or in the answers? Try all. Telephone. No capital letters. No underscores. No periods. No lowercase. No leet speech. Okay. Okay. Worksheet. Swap questions. Key. Is it the questions that are key or in the answers? Hello. What is this? A safe. It says staff only. There's a heart print on it too. Oh, okay. All right. Now listen. I know somebody must have cracked this already outside of here. I don't care to see the answer until I get firmly stuck. So let's all have some respect for each other here and go back to the worksheet and see if we can do this the way that Clown and Team intended. Okay. Who is the funniest neighbor? Barnaby. Who shines brighter than any star? That would be Sally. Who is the biggest chicken? Poppy. Which neighbor speaks to flowers? Frank. Who is your best friend? Wally. Okay, but I just put in the initials. The first letter of their names. Yeah. Is it exactly in order? Funniest. Barnaby. Brighter than any star. Sally. Obviously. Biggest chicken. Poppy. Neighbor speaks of flowers. Okay. Julie. Best friend. Wally. All caps. Didn't the sheet say no caps? Capital letters. No. The sheet fucking li you You're kidding me. It lied? Really? Okay. So I got it confused for a second <laughs> on, on talking to flowers. But I was absolutely in the right ballpark. The sheet lied on caps. Why, though? Not a lie, just a misunderstanding, because it was pointing at the wrong thing. All right. Well, here we are. <laughs> we broke through. Thank you for your patience. Molly's eyes are still on the side. I can see them. Welcome home. I had a dream when I began working on the Playfellow exhibition. Oh, can you hear me? Wally Darling was sitting at the foot of the bed with a rotary phone in front of him. 
ringing away. It looked just like the little toy phone we were restoring for the exhibit. It kept ringing. Wally stared at me like he was waiting for me to pick up the phone, just staring, unblinking, the phone ringing and ringing. I couldn't move. I couldn't figure out how to move and pick up the phone. He kept waiting. I couldn't pick up the phone. I keep getting phone calls now. Oh, we can light that up too. Or at least I assume that's what's happening. I keep hearing it ringing. All day sometimes. I check my phone and there's no new messages. I thought maybe some of the site staff were pranking me. But I tore up the workspace and couldn't find another phone that might be ringing. All that was there were the toys for the exhibit. And obviously those couldn't be ringing, but I kept hearing it anyway. The phone ringing and ringing. The more I work, the more questions I have. Why didn't any of the site staff I worked with remember this show? Even the ones who grew up in the 70s. Why can't I find any files on the Playfellow Workshop? Why isn't there a single TV Guide ad saying what network or time the show was on? I keep digging and digging. I've poured over every recovery the WHRP has given me access to, every inch of their website, and the things I find make less and less sense. If I didn't know better, I'd say everyone was coming together to pull an elaborate prank on me. I can still hear the phone ringing now. I don't know how to answer the phone. I need to answer the phone. Oh no. Hold on, we gotta get this part. Ring, ring, hello. Can you hear me? Call back soon, please. Just repeat it and repeat it. What happened here? Was this the exhibit or? Oh. Thursday, April 13th, 2023. To WHRP Nat from the staff at Question Answer Exhibitions. Safe code? Thanks for getting the activity prize shipped out so promptly. I wasn't expecting them to arrive in a lockbox. Should I be worried about the value of these prizes for insurance? There actually wasn't a code I could find in the packaging at all. Could you send that so we can open the box and give away the prizes to visitors? Thanks again. Give me a call if that's easier. Head Curator. Attention. Activity Worksheet JPEG. Blacklight text underneath email attachment reads, Wally Darling. Writing on sticky note reads, Attention staff, still waiting on safe code. If guest complete worksheet, offer to send prize later once we get this open. So it was the staff at the exhibit who started going mad. Writing on sticky note, a top vinyl glove. Put on gloves before handling any art. Call me if we run out. Is that for safekeeping purposes for the exhibit or because they are contaminated? This art was not the shipment. Please stop using the work printer to prank me. Blacklight text underneath artwork of Frank reads, Who are you? with a drawing of an eye and a spiral beneath it. Oh yeah. This was the off-site art we've seen. Jeez. What a mess. Someone really went mad. There's a sticky note on that TV. Oh. What's your favorite or least favorite part of the research slash restoration work? Our favorite part? Uncovering more information, of course, as well as restoring pieces with beautiful results. Nothing feels quite better. Nothing feels better quite like a job well done. Our least favorite part, however, nothing I can think of. Everything is so disgusting to touch. Sometimes the mail doesn't come for weeks. I want to rip into everything I have. My head feels so muddled, too, ever since I opened that envelope. Madness is catching. All staff. Check art with blacklight before hanging 
packing, cleaning, etc. Need photos for condition reports and WHRP team. So the people at the exhibit immediately found out that what they were sent was basically contaminated. So this is from the website team to them. We are overjoyed you've received all the work we have so far uncovered. Please take care of it while it is in your possession, but under no circumstances should it be touched with your bare hands. Please wear gloves. If a substance begins to grow on anything delivered, please place it back in the box it was shipped in and return it to us at your leisure. If you or anyone in your team experience nausea, dizziness, or fatigue, please don't be alarmed. We also thank you for your offer to assist in restoring these pieces, but I cannot accept your offer. So now there's an organic component. Hello again. The shipment of works for the exhibition arrived today. Thanks again for being so generous with these items. At some point, I would like to run down the full checklist with you to confirm which are originals and which are restorations or reproductions, so we can include that information while we write the didactic labels. Let me know if it's easier for me to email you a list or if you'd like to have a phone call about it. Speaking of restoration, I also want to ask, would you like us to work on having any of these items professionally touched up while we're here for the exhibit? Okay. So this was the first email and that was the reply above. Are we actually going to get a link out of this? No, I don't believe so. I think it's just part of the email. Phone. In blacklight. WHRP sent their research notebook. It has to be a prank. Maybe all of it. Maybe that's why no one has ever heard of Welcome Home. The staff, friends, parents, not a memory. All adds up to prank. Okay, that's nonsense. I don't know what to think. I feel like I need to read it again. There has to be answers. There has to be. I'll find answers. People need me to have answers. There's more of that stuff on the walls. I keep hearing phones ring. Oh, for research on loan, do not write. This one is mine also for research, also do not write in. To the right of the photo is a near illegible show script from Playfellow Workshop. Below the show script is a pink sticky note pad, drawn on the pad is a spiral, and a phone with two small speech bubbles that both say ring. Yeah, oh wow. Yep, I do see it. It looks like mold. <laughs> Something with tendrils growing underneath that book. A lot of spirals. The book. The house that what? The house, that home, you, you. Oh, we've really got to actually lean in on this one, huh? Hello, my name doesn't matter. I am something, I catalog something. I'm not something, but it must be. I'm holding all something in my hands pictures characters text i can barely read it's called welcome home and it looks like it might have been a children's book like i said i can't tell it was sopping wet when i found it this was the beginning of the journey Text on sticky note placed on research notebook reads. This one is mine also research. Blacklight text. Phone is ringing. There's the safe. And a picture of Wally. Signed, Wally Darling. Broken? Call facilities ASAP. A radio. I am so sorry. That's the end of the gallery. Okay. <sighs> the material itself, physically, is poison. It's a contaminant to whoever touches it with their bare hands. And there's been 
a research notebook effort all the way along. And there's more items here that were actually put out in the exhibit. And now it's gotten inside the head of the question answer and their staff. A 404. <gasps> Why, thank you, Wally. Okay. Don't worry, it's the whole it's the whole top portion. You ready? Here we go. Let me in. Let me in. Okay, that was substantial. There is more. Oh, yep, there it is. Thank you. W-O-X-Y-V-E. There we go. And yep, there's a bug here. Oh, ah. Okay, wait for it. There it is, actually. This is a big screen, but I think we're moving in now. So I tells him, I'm just pulling your leg. Boy, you should have seen him home. I had the poor guy's head turn like a merry-go-round. Yeah, he's a real sourpuss. No wonder Julie can't tell a good joke. She's got a sense of humor only Frank could love. Did I tell you that joke she gave me? Something about a three that one? I ought to be a good Samaritan and teach her a thing or two about puns. What? You didn't like that one? I came up with that on the fly. That ought to be worth something. Yeah, speaking of flies, I know he's going on and on about his family today. The poor guy's got more family members than the caterpillar's got legs. And if I'm going howdies, it's at least four. Hey, unless he's walking around on all fours like moi, then I don't count arms. That reminds me, hey, he's been getting better at running. Especially for a guy that's only got two legs. Still scares easier than my mama, though. And she's a real chicken. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, I chased him down for a good reason. Because Zeus was supposed to come in today. Which they didn't. And if you think about it, I'm the poor guy that deserves an apology here. I ran after that mailman all through the neighborhood and with nothing to show for it. Yeah, yeah, real funny. A poor little guy like me deserves some sympathy. A clown without a kazoo is like... Like an artist without his paintbrush. Go on, get tell him. Hello? Buddy? Bell? Hey, you stop painting. Everything all right? <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so this tells us quite a few things, actually. First, uh, yeah, Barnaby can speak to home. Second, a lot of the clips that we've seen today all were in the same day. And something happened with Wally there. Is there a transcript for that one? Let's take a look. Yep. Oh. Yeah, he was directly talking to home. 
That realistic bug is strange. That's strange context here. What else are we missing, if anything? Barnaby and Eddie's bug. Okay, where would I find that? Ah, it's another, it's another code mix-up. Gotcha. All right, let's see. Okay. Why won't you answer me, neighbor? Why can't I hear you? You know me. You do. Please open. Let me in. This is talking to the staffer. The one with the dream who can't pick up the phone. Oh, Y-X-W-V-O-E is another one. Okay. Aha! And this would lead us to the old singing MP4. I'm not seeing any changes here. Have I checked the transcript page linked under the audio on the main sites? Thank you, Synth. Ah, okay. <laughs> Lost the forest for the trees there for a bit. Thank you. Hey, hey, oh, I'm coming. Just be a sec. I'll be right there. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Good, not a lot. Oh, I really ought to look where my feet are going, huh? Oh, hold on, buddy. These are yours. I'd forgotten I'd had them to give them out to you. Thank the stars I hadn't dropped nothing fragile. <sighs> Shoo-wee. I ain't had no idea how late it gotten. I'm plum tuckered after all this running around. It ain't even the first time I fell today. Ran into a few buildings on the way here, too. You know how Julie likes to do her drawing on the sidewalks and all? Well, she drew up a hopscotch on the curb this morning, and I just couldn't help myself. I had to just have a hop, skip, and a jump to start my day. I really am accident prone, I figure, because my face ended up meeting the pavement. <laughs> I may have been racket today and tossed around, but I'm still fair to middling, even after that bowling ball order. I suppose I don't got much more running left to do today, though. Unless you got something for me to carry for you. Is there any leaded package or parcel you need me to run for you? Uh, wait, what, what are you looking around me for? Mailman! Uh, you got any packages for little old me? My kazoo collection should have been in my mailbox today. Where is it? Uh, 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 now, Barnaby, you know better. I have to put it in your mailbox. It's policy. You know a dog like me doesn't do policy, <laughs> pal. The only policy I follow is the creed all dogs follow. Chase in your local mailman. No, oh, I hate that policy. I'll beat you to your mailbox lickety split. If I don't split my lickety... <sighs> I was this close to dogpiling him. Next time, don't give Eddie any hints, eh? Okay. Yeah. Everything we've seen here seemed to have happened in the same day. Or at least there were a lot of events that did. And consecutively, everybody's treating Wally like he's just... Like he's present, but he's not. I think we got it all. I think we got it all. I'm gonna go ahead and, and ring the bell. Synth, anybody who's around, can, can you confirm? <laughs> Update complete. Do we get the achievement? <laughs> Wally would give an A+. Okay. But it's not 100%, huh? Oh, <laughs> cloud approves. Oh, there's not, there's not MJ. Okay. All right. 
Cool. If it's an A plus, then it's an A plus. I will absolutely take it. Actually, now we'll call it an A plus. Now that we're looking at the at the full images of the packaging, see, I did miss this. Now I'll be content. Now I'll be content. <laughs> Woo! That was just the most. Gecko is bad. Thank you for subscribing for three months. Cool. Appreciate it. Oh, this has been a delight. What an update. What an absolutely stunning evening. And what a fantastic way to spend an anniversary week. Ah, oh, wow. This was awesome. Super awesome. I am way too warm in the office right now. I am so hungry that it's actually kind of hurting now. This was fantastic. This is going to be a lot of a cleanup too <laughs> before you see this uploaded to YouTube for for the actual uh, cleaned up version. But uh, Ink Oracle says, this is my first ever stream and this was so fun. I'm so glad. Thank you. Clown, Synth, Puzz, everybody from the team, Frank... Frankie, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. If I if I haven't met you yet or you haven't or I didn't see you in the chat, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for being here. Um when is this gonna be posted on YouTube? Don't ask me that exact day. Uh this is gonna take a little bit of tinkering to get this up there, man. This is gonna take a little tinkering. This has been four and a half hours. All right. <laughs> four and a half hours. <gasps> oh my god okay no synth you're rad <laughs> you're all rad all of you are rad thank you so much I salute all of you thank you for 8 years of Nightmind thank you for an amazing weekend over here on Twitch thank you su for supporting Welcome Home. Thank you to everybody who's part of the Welcome Home team for making such a beautiful, fantastic quality project. This is always worth it. Much, much love and continued success to all of you. <laughs>